Um, we'll be having men and ladies prayer room Wednesday through Sunday this coming week. Ladies will meet over here about 10 minutes before church. Get in and pray. Men will meet out here in the parking lot, as we always do. Because be here early. Be here by quarter till. Get you a good seat. Especially Friday night. If you want a good seat, you better get here early. Uh, it'll be packed jam full in here. Uh, Acts chapter number 3. One verse of scripture here tonight. And I want to give you just a thought. And we're, we're going to got work to do tonight. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. Repent ye therefore. That's a good word, repent. Look at it, repent. That's a good word. Like I used to hear Dr. Ruckman say, he'd say, brethren, you can always repent. Brethren, you can always repent. You can always repent of something. Ain't that right? Amen. That's right. Good way to live. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, I looked at that little phrase there, the times of refreshing. Actually, this is context would be Peter's message to Israel and the Jews who rejected Christ and him talking about the second coming and the blessing of the millennium second coming. I don't think I'd be doing any damage tonight to just lift that little phrase, times of refreshing, out of that verse and use it for a camp meeting. So I want to preach tonight on camp meeting, a time of refreshing. Camp meeting, a time of refreshing. Now look, y'all, the devil does not want us to have this camp meeting. He does not want you here. It is the devil's will that you miss it. It is the devil's will that we just call the whole thing off. That's the devil. That's what the devil wants. Uh, he hates it. And the reason he hates it is because the rich heritage that our country has because of camp meeting. I don't know if you've ever traveled a lot, but uh, if you've ever gone up north, uh, you go up past past uh, Virginia, Maryland, you get up on in the northern state, there is a really, really big difference uh, in the, the way people think, the way people talk, the way people live up there than there is down here. That is not an accident. The reason there's so much Bible, the reason this part of the country is called Bible Belt is because for a hundred years, old-fashioned, circuit-riding, Methodist and Baptist preachers Travel these mountains and had what we call camp meeting. You realize tonight that they said, like in the 17, late, late 1700s, uh, there was one year there was only 600 Methodists in the United States. Within 45 years, there was 200,000. That was because of the old fashioned camp meeting Methodist preachers. Now, when we say, when I say Methodist camp meeting now, you say, good night, ain't no Methodist church going to have. The, the Methodists now are not even closely, don't even resemble those old time Methodists. The old time Methodist brother would skin the bark off a tree. The old time Methodist would travel these mountains on horseback and go from town to town to town to town. They'd set up brush harbor meetings. They'd cut up camp meetings. And back then, up in these little villages, you couldn't stick a, you couldn't turn the internet on and listen to a preacher. You couldn't turn TV on and watch a preacher. You couldn't uh, you couldn't listen to a tape. Yeah, there wasn't no such thing. And once in a while, circuit riding preacher would come through town, and word would get out all over the country that the pre <laughs> preacher was coming, like Peter Cartwright and Robert Sheffy and all them guys like that. And people would come from miles and miles around, and they would come, put up the big old tabernacle. They'd build it out of as limbs or something, or they if they got if it had a lot of resources that would get a tent and it set up that big old meeting and people would come and bring their young'uns and mamaw and bring them in a covered wagon and they'd make a big old circle around here and they'd camp they said this thing gonna they'd say we're gonna start out for three weeks or something like that and then see how it goes and they'd get out there and somebody would preach and they'd pray and, excuse me the kids would play all day long the ladies would fix something to eat they'd kill turkey and deer and uh, have a big meeting out there and then at night they'd gather under the tabernacle and a man of God would get up there 
like a flamethrower, brother. I mean, fire coming out of him. And, and people would shake and be saved and get under conviction and get right with God. And that, you ever heard the old Cumberland Valley revivals that went up through Kentucky, through Virginia, through West Virginia, on up into Pennsylvania, down into the Carolinas, the mountains of Tennessee. And brother, that's why, that's why in this part of the country, every little old town you go to in the south has First Baptist, First Methodist, First Presbyterian. That's how all that got started. Oh, Shubal Stearns and all them people down there to Sandy Creek uh, Revival this way in North Carolina. That's how all this stuff got started. We are a part of heritage. What we're doing here this week, brother, is not something new. It's something that started over 200 years ago. You know what Camp Meeting did? Camp meeting started the uh, the mourners bench. That's that's what we call the altar. They call it the mourners bench, and they'd set up a big old bench like this right here, and people would come and mourn, just bawl their eyes out, and people would come and, and pray and get saved. They call it the mourners bench, and that's why all over the South you got uh, people coming to the altar. That's where we got that, uh, that and, and that you know that's when people started saying Amen. During the church services. That's when people started saying hallelujah. Did you know that's where we got them? You know how when the service starts getting good and we say sing that verse again? Sing another verse of a song? That's where that come from. Them old-fashioned camp meeting services. I tell you how they did up in the mountains and they still do some. I've been in revivals in Kentucky and West Virginia where I'd just be, uh, or everybody'd just be sitting around like this and after the offering or something, some sister would stand up over here and she'd start just singing, there's not a friend like the... It wasn't on the schedule. If not down, she wasn't scheduled to sing that night. Just, I've seen it happen. And Miss Kerr and them up yonder in Kentucky and them mountains stand up and start singing. The next thing I know, the power of God hit that place and the altar would fill up. People start crying. You know, you know modern day churches cannot do that. You know, because they got everything on a schedule. This happens next, then this happens next. And they'll, they'll hand it to you and say, this is what's going to happen. Boy, I'm telling you, not, not in them days. Brother, they'd shout out you in the woods somewhere, come back in, bring their eight or nine-year-old kid to the altar, and they'd get saved, mom and daddy hugging necks and crying and getting right with God. I'm talking about getting right with God. I'm not talking about putting on a big show, coming in here like, well, here I am, and I'm a singer, and I'm a preacher. and I'm No, no, we don't need that junk. We need some, do we need to be on the altar slobbering brother we need to be on the altar bawling our eyes out asking God for our families and for our homes and for our boys and girls and, and for our teenagers and for our bus kids that they feel the power of God ladies and gentlemen that's what count me now they said that back in the 1700s that 30% of the population of the United States had been to camp meeting that's a lot of people. Uh, that's a lot of people. That's why there's a Baptist church on every corner. You know how there ain't no Catholic churches down here in the, in the mountains? They can't find nowhere to build one. There's three Baptist churches on every road you go down. And, and the, they all stayed up north. And it's different up there uh, because of the lack of Bible preaching and Bible preaching preachers and teachers. Amen? That's right, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in that time. Now, my introduction to camp meeting, as you know, I got saved at 18 years old, Nebo Baptist Church. And uh, I got saved in April, and I, that was May, June. My pastor started talking about camp meeting. He said, we're well, camp meeting last two weeks in July. Ed McAbee is going to come and preach and I had heard Brother Ed one or two nights in revival. I got saved in. I met Brother Ed when I'd been saved about seven or eight days. He come and preached, fill in when Joe had to go somewhere else. And uh, I, I didn't know what a camp meeting was. I didn't know. I thought, well, what's camp meeting? Whatever it is, let's do it. And they had it down there in Nebo at the tabernacle down below the church out there on Cemetery Road there in Nebo. Just across the road from that little little Italian restaurant, Roma's now, and out in there, and they had that little camp meeting out in there. Well, I went, and that, when I first walked in there, it's just made out of wood, and it's just a big old uh, 
shed like this, no walls in it like that, and they have a piano up here, and they get up and sing, and I'll never forget, I'd been saved April, May, June, July, three months. I'd been saved three months, and they, we got in there, and boy, I started getting a blessing out of that singing, and Brother Ed would get up there, we all us boys, we'd crowd in there, we could not wait. We could not wait for them services to start. We'd crowd in there with our Bible, and Brother Ed would get up there and open that book, and I'm telling you, when he began to preach, it burned my heart, burned within me. There was something, there was a fire going inside me. I thought, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Listen, I've seen boys out there, I've seen them throw packs of cigarettes down. I've seen them out there in the rain praying on a pile of sawdust. I've seen them, those old grandmas shouting their hair, bobby pins out of their hair, you know. Amen. Now grandma's sitting at home watching Lifetime movies full of the devil. Uh, but back then, there were some old, old grandmas that shouted, and they loved the Lord. You ain't going to shout watching Lifetime movies. You'll be full of the devil is what you'll be, and you can take that, like it, lump it, bump it, jump it, choke on it. I don't care. It's the truth anyway. I'm telling you tonight, brother. Come on, ladies. It ain't no wonder you ain't got no joy. It ain't no wonder you can't shout. Amen. You listen to the devil's crowd. That's the devil preaching through that stuff on TV. Amen. Come on, Brother Danny, preach it. Thank you, sir. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that's what count me done in my life. You can't play around with the world and get a blessed account meeting. What's wrong with you? Listen, brother, I need it. The devil don't want us to have it. You know what preaching does? Preaching will reveal things to you. Preaching will help you think straight. Preaching supernatural. You know that? Just like what I said there a minute ago, I had no plans of saying that. And But boy, was that a dagger. I, I, some of y'all just went, well, I don't know if I agree with that. I know why you don't. You're guilty. I, you, there's no way you can say that's right. You ain't going to convince me. Somebody stand up and say, the Lord led me to watch a movie and they cuss and they got naked and they got drunk. But the Lord was pleased with that. Come on now, y'all. Come on. Who are you trying to kid? You ain't, hey, listen, some of you people, hey, it ain't my fault. Don't get mad at me. That's like a man, woman getting mad and smashed through the mirror because show the wrinkles in her face. I mean, it ain't my fault you do it. Hey, it's just time to get right with God, people. It's time to get right with God. It's camp meeting time. And if you're, if you're a mature Christian, you'll say, you know what, Brother Danny, you're right. I need to straighten up so God will get a hold of my kids. And if you're a backslid baby, you'll say, well, I disagree with some of the things he said. Uh, but, well, that's up between you and the Lord. But at uh, count meeting, it got good, buddy. It got good. I've seen some of the greatest things at count meeting, things that you cannot plan. I don't know if any of y'all remember this or not, but uh, how many of you were a part of the great, wonderful Carolina Rat Revival? That we had over yonder that time. Some few of you in here were there. <laughs> you remember the Carolina Rat Revival? Well, we had, uh, we were there going to the old building when we first started out. We had a big camp meeting planned out, and there's preachers coming everywhere. And then we brought in hay, brought bales of hay, and put it in here. It really, it really looks good, but it, it, it just gets strolled out everywhere and everything like that. And we put it in there. Well, somehow or another, this rat had got into that, that hay before we brought it in. Well, well, he's up there, and it was real tidy now. You know, like the first row was right here. Well, about that time, about halfway through the service, the uh, brother and sister rat come out of there. Oh, this front row went, woo! And, and we thought the Lord moved, but it wasn't the Lord. And they was all shouting and screaming, and somebody said, there goes a rat. And I, I forget who it was preaching. Frank, you're one of them guys. And, one of the, oh, and we laughed, and that was the funniest thing ever was. Well, the next night, here it come again. A little rat run across there, and one of the boys jumped up and went, bam! Sent him to rat hell. <laughs> of course, some of you believe different. You believe that rat went to heaven. Uh, but he sent that rat to rat hell. And, uh, and brother, that rat died right there on the spot. And he kicked it out, and the preacher never missed a lick. Just kept right on preaching. I tell you one night, at New Manor one time, back when we was in that old building, some of y'all up there, the old building on top of the hill, that building had an old stage we, we built, and didn't even have no carpet, and one, one night we was up there, and we built a big old fire, and we was burning stuff, and we had a big old fire out there, and we was watching it, and, uh, and about that time, out of that fire, there's a rat about that long, come running out of that fire, and I said, oh, look out, and it run right into church. I said, oh, gosh. 
We went in there and looked for it, looked for it, looked for it. Never could find it, never could find it. And I said, I'll tell you what we'll do, boys. I said, let's just leave these side doors open all night, and he'll, maybe he'll get tired in there, and he'll, he'll go out. And, uh, well, we did. Left it out, and we thought, we thought, we thought he's gone. We'll come up the next day, close the doors. Well, Sunday morning come around. One of them boys says, uh, they said, preacher, wouldn't it be something if he come out? Yeah. <laughs> well, we all laughed, thought that was a joke. Well, you know it. You know it. Brother Rat, as he was later called, had been back in the nursery because his kids back there had cookies. And that rat smelled them cookies. He'd been back there eating them things. And it got too hot for him back there in that nursery. Them babies in there running around, kids screaming, right in the middle of prayer. I was serious as a heart attack. I was, I was mean, listen, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's somebody to mess with us preaching the Word of God. When I'm, when I'm plugged in and I'm right, buddy, I don't want nothing messing it up. Brother Rat come down that aisle right there. And I saw him, I was like, bloop, 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 bloop. People going like this, bloop. All the way up to the, bloop, 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 bloop. like a chain reaction. And, and somebody started screaming over here. I tried to act like I didn't see it because all the other people were sitting over here. And he went, bloop, and run right up under the altar. And people was laughing. And people was well, shut up, y'all. And I was trying to preach. And I, and I kept going. And I thought, well, I just shut her down not too long after that. And I thought, well, I mean, who's going to come to the altar? I mean, you're going to come to the altar and go down like this, put your nose up uh, with a rat and all. No, 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 no. Uh, but anyway, uh, we had a great time. That was a camp meeting. That was a camp meeting. It sure was. i never forget Larry Brown one time come to preach. And uh, we had decorations like we had like this. Well, we got this right. I told him, I said, them things... Them things would look better if they're shiny and the pumpkins and stuff. So went and bought this uh, clear shellac lacquer and I sprayed, sprayed the apples, sprayed the pumpkin. They're real shiny. They really look good. We had a big old thing here of apples. And old Brother Larry, he's up there preaching. He's running all the time. And every time he'd go buy them apples, he'd say, man, them apples look good. And he'd preach a little bit and he'd say, man, them apples look good. And I said, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord. And sure enough, right in the middle of the service, he grabbed one of them apples and I said, no, Lord, that's going to poison him. He'll be food poisoned in the hospital. He went, hum, and started chewing it and then went, and spit it all over the first three rows. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. How many of y'all was there that night? Remember that, Carrie? He spit it all over everybody. It's one that didn't kill him. Uh, but uh, uh, boy, all that, that's good old fashioned count. One time we had these <laughs> one time we had these pumpkins all over the place, like this, decorated with pumpkins. And I don't know what or who that is. Uh, I think I've seen him up town one day. Uh, but uh, they uh, they they we sat on pulpit and had these pumpkins. Well it got to people got to shout. Well, I was like this, leading the choir, and it got on. People started shouting all over the church. People screaming, jumping up and down, running the, running the bases, jumping the benches. You know, that's what they call jumping benches. And that's what they do up in the mountains. And boy, they was up there, and I was leading the choir, and it got on. It got on. About that time, one of them boys got right and grabbed one of them pumpkins down there and hurled it, and it went, whoo. I saw a pumpkin go by me. I said, just keep saying. I said, Lord, get dangerous in here. Well, the next morning, that was on Sunday night. Next morning, I went to the bank. And preacher goes to the bank on Monday, you know, because you get paid on Sunday. And so I went to the bank. Next Monday morning, here I am, the downtown dignified reverend uh, at the bank. And uh, uh, we had the largest Sunday school in Western North Carolina. And everybody in the bank knew me. And I was in there. And I was sitting there. I had two girls from church working that bank. And one of them hollered out, hey, preacher. Said, I thought, oh, sorry, he's going to hit you with that pumpkin last night. And these old women turned around and went. And the girl said, what are you talking about? I said, oh, last night one of the boys threw a pumpkin. I thought he was going to hit the preacher. And this one old, old rich lady, you could tell, she, said, she went, at church? <laughs> she liked to die. She thought, what? I thought, yeah, that's what we do on Sunday night. We choose upside and throw pumpkins at each other. That's better than sitting there asleep like I did in her church. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. Brother, we had the office time ever was. Amen. Uh, Larry told me one time, he said, he said, I've never been in such a place in my life. He said, I was out there. He said, I drove all the way up here from South Carolina. I was in the restroom, using the restroom. He said, some guy come flying in the restroom with his eyes that big around. He said, whoo, it's good. 
to be saved and run out the door like that. He said, I've never seen that in the restroom. Hey, brother, when you got them shouting in the restroom, you're having camp meeting, amen. Glory to God, out in the parking lot, at the schoolhouse, at the workplace. Thank God we got something to shout about. Amen. Glory to God, it's good to be saved. That's what camp meeting is. It gets spontaneous. Somebody gets a blessing. Somebody else gets a blessing. Somebody else gets a blessing. Somebody else gets a blessing. Just keeps going on and on and on. I'll tell you something else Camp Meeting do. It can encourage a weary preacher. Now, preachers ain't the only reason we have it, but they're a big reason we have it. Listen, nobody knows. I ain't trying to sound pitiful. Don't cry for me. I ain't asking for your sympathy. But they ain't, nobody knows what it's like trying to pastor church in this generation. Unbelievable. I've been pastoring alone. It's like, it's like you got a whole big nursery full of babies. Really? Little tiny kid. I mean, you can't move without somebody getting mad at you. You can't say, hey, something we didn't say to me. I mean, I mean, it's unbelievable. I know preachers that are just about ready to quit. Fall in the town. Listen, people, you ought to try this sometime. Try it. One guy, I, I, I can't stand this. Meet somebody tell say, you got made. Don't work one day a week. I like to smack somebody like that. Follow me around one day this week, and we'll see how far you get. I, I put in some hours this past week, buddy. <laughs> Let me tell you, we did. Listen, hey, we can encourage a weary preacher. I'll never forget one time I was really, really down and discouraged, and I was, I was fighting the tears back and everything. And back then, I used to go up there to the camp meeting in White Plains, North Carolina, Mount Airy. That is Mayberry, right up near, up yonder in Dobson, Mount uh, Mount Airy is actually right beside what they call, would call Mayberry. And Brother Carl Lackey would have a camp meeting every year. And I'd go up there and get a blessing. And I remember driving, I remember driving my car, and I was feeling very hurt and very lonely. This can be a lonely business sometimes. You can be surrounded with people and be lonely because there ain't nobody you can talk to. And ain't nobody you can spill it out on. See, I, I can't afford to be down and out and and lay out of church like y'all can. I can't do that. I got to keep going whether I feel like it or not. I got to keep going whether I want to or not. And I do want to. I'm not asking for your sympathy. I'm just saying, buddy, it can get rough with church members that you preach to your whole life that turn right around, stab you in the back. And it hurts. It hurts. And, and you know what? I was going up the road and I thought, if I just make it, to that camp meet. If I could just make it to that camp meet. Sure enough, I went, and I, and I when I sat down in there, I, everybody was around me, and everybody said amen, and I felt peace and security. And there are people right now that are so tore up over, over the coronavirus, now over the floods, over the hurricane, over the election, over all this stuff, there are people saying, if I can just get to shining light. If I can just make it there this weekend, Lord, maybe you'll help me. Boy, I'm telling you, that's why we need to put our own preferences aside and pray together that God will help some of these preachers. Amen? Amen. Don't let the devil get in you. Don't let the devil hinder you. Don't let nothing hinder you. Usually, yeah, the devil will get in the, the, the singing or the food. The singing or the food. That's where the devil usually hits. And so we got to make sure we don't do that. You ladies, listen, I've been in camp meetings where the ladies would say, I'll tell you one thing, preacher, you're going to have to get somebody else to do this next year. Thank you. That was a real encouraging word. And I tell you what I have. I've been in other camp meetings where I'd walk in the kitchen and you could feel the Spirit of the Lord and the ladies was in there singing. And they was in there singing, I have been blessed, putting up those dishes, fixing those sandwiches. Just a piece of God going there. Amen. That's what we need. That's what we need. Don't you let the devil tell you. Well, nobody else does it. You shouldn't do it. Everybody else ain't giving money. You don't have to. Everybody else don't dress right. You don't have to. Everybody else don't act right. You don't have to. Tell, tell them to go jump in the lake. You get right with God. Do what God wants you to do. Be a blessing to somebody at this camp meeting. You know, preaching is supernatural. It really is. Not the preacher. There's nothing special about a preacher. But preaching under the Holy Spirit 
It's supernatural. Now that's the difference between preaching and teaching. Man get up and teach the Bible and we need it. We definitely need it. But when a man's preaching in the right spirit, God will reveal things in your life and bang, bang. It might be something the preacher don't even say. How many of you ever been to church one time and a preacher preached on everything in the world and you got under conviction over something he didn't even say? You thought, God, I need to go to the altar and get right. There's something special. There's something special. Don't, you can tell it. Y'all can tell it. You get them boys up here, Frankie and Barry Spears and everything, whatever they're saying is good. And then they get second gear, third gear, and all of a sudden, it's like something kicks in from another world. And the Lord starts talking. I've preached in places many times where halfway through the preaching, people started bawling and come to the altar and get right. I finally just had... I just, I've been preaching lots of times, and I couldn't even hear myself. Really. They call it shouting you down. And, and I just stopped and let them have a good time. Lord, I remember one time here, we had somebody up preaching. I believe it was Frankie. And we had Reggie Sadler here that night. And we had Hallelujah Howard sitting right over there where Joe is. Joe, Howard's not able to get out much anymore. He is still alive. You got some big shoes to fill there, bud. How many of y'all remember Hallelujah Howard? He did not hush from the time he walked in to the time he left. And I loved it. I, 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 he said, hey, man, you said it's good to be here. Hey, man. <laughs> he was a funny guy. He really was. I, I got the biggest kick out of him. And one night, Frankie was preaching. And Hallelujah Howard is up over here. And he's clapping his hand, preaching all these people right in here. And Frankie just preaching his head off. Then Reggie went down through there, and he was preaching to all them people over here. I was up here like, oh, Lord, mercy, good night in the morning. I, I thought, I'm gonna, which one of these I'm going to listen to? But all of three of them got a good message. When it, I didn't know who to give love offering to that night. They all preached a good sermon. You say, that's a confusion. No, it wasn't. It was, it was right. It was good. Three preachers preaching at the same time. No, it was a blessing. What a blessing that was. I'll never forget. You heard her tell this story over and over, and I'll just tell you one. I got a bunch of them like this. I'll just tell you one. I was in West Virginia preaching. Ask Gary. Gary and Ugg, Loretta, Lynn, will be here Thursday. Ask him if this ain't true. I was up preaching up there one night, and I was, I mean, I was preaching hard as I could. Get saved, get saved, get saved. And there's some old boys that work for the coal, coal mines come in and sit back there about halfway back. And I got up and I was preaching my head off. I didn't, I, I seen them, but I didn't pay no attention to them. And I said, Lord, y'all need to get saved. I said, listen here, big boy. You better get saved before you die and go to hell. You better get saved before you die and go to hell. And about, we, we dismissed the service. About an hour later, uh, Gary called me and said, Brother Danny. He said, did you see them guys back there? And they better, it looked like they just come out of a coal mine. I said, yeah, I saw them. He said, well, they just left the house. He said, they come over and want to get saved. He said, that guy got saved. And he said, uh, I said, well, praise God, brother. Hallelujah. And he said, you know that guy? He, uh, he said, who was that man up there? And Gary said, well, that's Danny Castle. That's a friend of mine from North Carolina. And he said, how'd he know me? And Gary said, well, he didn't. I don't reckon. Well, he said, he's up, there call, he's up there talking to me. And Gary said, well, and I, I, was up there, I was up there saying, boy, you better get saved, big boy. This might be your last chance, big boy. You better get on. And everybody in West Virginia got a nickname. His name was Big Boy. That was his name. That's what everybody called him. And I was up there, you better get saved, big boy, or you're going to hell. And I had no idea. And see, that's what preaching does. A preacher, when he gets plugged in right, you'll think he's been over at your house looking in your window. Yes, sir, buddy. I've had people tell me, Brother Danny, have you been over at my house? No, I don't even know where you live. Well, how'd you know? I didn't. I wouldn't have if you hadn't told me. <laughs> I'd just get it right with God and keep my mouth shut if I was you. Uh, but look, look, that's what count meeting is, people. That's what count meeting is. Praise God. Preaching supernatural. Don't get offended. Everybody get along. Get you a blessing. Be here early for every service. Stand, make, get your kids in here. Parents, get your priorities right. Lord have mercy. I know people buy their kids a $1,000 phone and a $15 Bible made out of cardboard, little bitty prints. Look, you have to have a magnifying glass to read it. That's your priorities. That's your priorities. Get them a good Bible. 
Get them a good leather Bible that's real. And God, get them a common man's reference Bible or something like that, you know, something they can learn from it and read and study. I know women that paid $600 of their own money for their girl to have a cheerleading outfit. I don't know if anybody in here did that. This is in another state. $600 for a cheerleading outfit. And then said they couldn't afford to send their girl to camp. See, it's priorities, parents. It's priorities. But one day when they come home and they're in trouble, they're on drugs, you'll say, I made a mistake. But it's too late. We got a chance this week. Now let me prophesy. I'm going to prophesy. Something will happen that's going to try to hinder you from being in these services. Mark it down. I don't know what, but something will happen. If one of the kids gets sick, mama come one service, daddy stay home. Daddy come one service, mama stay home. Alternate. Don't The whole family don't miss because one kid's sick. I'm telling you, yeah, get in here. Get in here. My kids used to get sick. I'd say, come on, we're going to church anyway. And might as well be sick at church. I, Chrissy, they used to stay in my office and, and they're supposedly sick. Then I, they'd give them some Tylenol. And then I'd go in there at the church and they was in there drinking Pepsi and eating Reese's Cup. So they must have got healed. But get them in. Get them in here. Get them in here. Get them in here. Three nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, are big nights. Don't miss it. Tell you what, let's do. I want uh, the choir to come back up here right now. Get all the mics on. The choir, all the choir to come back up here right now. And here's what I want us all to do this week. Here's what I want us all to do. This is what I want you to do this week. This is what I'm going to do. And we're going to pray. And we're going to fast. And here's what we're going to do this week. And here's what I want everybody here to do. Let's all stand, please. Everyone stand, please. And here's what I want your prayer to be. If you want to come to the altar, you come on. If y'all want to come to the altar, you come on. Go ahead, girls. Let's sing it. Here's what I want us to do. You turn the mic on. Let's go, come on. Amen. Dear oh Lord, Amen. 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 Let me be more. Amen. You need to come. Like you. you need to come. Come on. Amen. And less like me. And we yeah. and I Amen. Amen. my knees yeah. to pray. Ah, glory. That's right. Come on. Amen. Let's obey God here tonight, friend. Let's obey the Lord. You need to come, young lady. Young man, and we Woo! 
blessings to my mind. Amen. Amen. And how to me. Amen. You've been so kind. That's right. And when your spirit takes control. Amen. If you need to come, come on tonight. Come on. Couldn't look around and see people wiping tears. People that say, I really do want the Lord to help me, Brother Danny. I know, Brother Danny, you fuss at us and everything, but God knows my heart. I really do want to. And I believe you. I believe you. I believe we've got a church of people that want to do right. I do. We all do. But we fall short. I do. I ain't everything I should be. And I tell you something, ain't nobody else is either. We ought to pray, Lord, I want to be more like you and less like me. You know who my biggest problem is? Right here. Right here, old Danny. He hinders me more than anything or anybody else. And I want to be more like him and less like me. I mean that. I mean that. I want the Lord to knock off everything that ain't right in my life. Everything. Life's too short to carry a bunch of junk. Sin in your life. They say, Lord, get the sin out of my life. Life's short, people. Be gone before we know it. Let's don't waste it. You got something still praying tonight? Your prayer? The next three days, Lord, more like you. Less like me. Take one of those days and fast. At least till church time. Maybe don't eat nothing all day for church. Then eat after church Wednesday night or Thursday or whenever. Wednesday be a good day because we're not having a morning meal. And fast if God lays it on your heart. Say, Lord, my marriage, my kids, our community, my uncle, my daddy, my family. Lord, I want to be more like you and less like me. Amen. Y'all come on down. She's still playing softly. Amen. I'm still praying tonight. You just let the Lord have you have his way in your heart. Amen. Yes, amen. needs y'all we all got needs let's humble ourselves before the Lord humble yourself the best way to do is humble yourself don't be proud like a peacock 
saying, no, nobody can't tell you nothing. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. That's what the Bible says. Pride goes before destruction. A Holy Spirit before the fall. We ain't got nothing to be proud over except what Jesus has done. Amen. 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 So I'm still praying tonight. This is a good start off for a camp meeting week. Hallelujah. I want you to come expecting God to do something. I want you to pray, Lord, it's me. Not my brother and sister, me, oh Lord. Don't miss a service. Please don't stand around out there and talk when somebody's in here preaching. If you're working with the food, fine. But when somebody's preaching, for heaven's sake, get in here and listen to every word of it. You can talk before church and after church. Uh, The devil's cheating you out of it. Get in on all the preaching you can get. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, do I need to mention anything? Drinks? Yeah, we're going to set up tables tonight. We're going to turn the junior church into a lunchroom tonight. So, men, y'all go ahead and get back there, Lorraine or somebody. Tell them where. where and y'all guys start fixing the chairs and the tables. Now, look, we're going to have one more work day down here. We ain't going to have no more work days for a long time. Uh, it's holiday season. Um, I got to go to Florida, preach next, not this weekend, but the next, of course, down in Fort Myers. Somebody asked me this morning, said, are you really going to Fort Myers? And yeah, it didn't, it didn't do much in the lower part of it. Punta Gorda, Sarasota, all up there, they got it. But um, I talked to the preacher, and they're still, we're going to have the revival. And um, all these things going on, then it's couple's trip, then it's Thanksgiving, then it's Christmas, and then it's winter camp, and then it's on another, starting another year if the Lord don't come. So every, all you men, if a bunch of y'all will, Help them get the chairs and tables out, set up for the meals. And um, we'll have one more work day, man. Need some weed eaters. Need some uh, people that'll clean. I'm going to put up a lot of signs tomorrow evening. Won't be too much, and we'll get that done. And then I'm going to try to take care of my own house uh, Tuesday. Uh, get it ready. Okay? Well, I don't know if we're going to have a whole lot of company or not, but anyway, that's what we're going to do. All right. All hearts clear. But I forgot to mention anything. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. 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 And it was like perfect time. Yeah. We got real quiet and I saw him and I laughed and I came home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. 
That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 All right, can you hear that? Got a mmm. That? Mm. That's monitor and it's too much mid or something, Brother Kevin. Y'all, y'all don't mind sound people stay a little bit. We'll have a little meeting here tonight. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Anybody else right quick? Listen, y'all. It's uh, the hurricane. Everything you can see is something picture you can't see, picture something you can't see. That flood that come down through there, that's a picture of what's happened spiritually in the Bible Belt. The devil has flooded it. And you are now being flagged on your phone if you text your, your conservative, your uh, Bible believer. They're saying now that if you purchase a Bible in some places that your name's being put on a watch list, possibly a terrorist. Us, we're the terrorists now. That's how twisted and backwards everything is. That your name is on a list of potential terrorists. Or that if you use the words Democrat, if you say something negative about the, the world's system, uh, you could be put on a watch list. That's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. They're trying to shut us up. They believe in freedom of speech until they get in control. They believe in freedom of their speech, not ours. And if you believe in freedom of speech, a person ought to be able to say anything they want to and believe anything they want to. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, we give them freedom. They won't give it to us. And these next three weeks in our country is very, very critical. Three weeks from Tuesday, the United States of America will decide which way they want to go. Worse or worser, terrible or, or totally off the charts in wickedness and ungodliness. And you know what? We don't vote for personalities. We vote for our Christian values. We vote for our Christian values, y'all. Um, we Christians can't vote for abortion. Christians can't vote for same-sex marriage. Christians cannot vote. You cannot be right with God and vote same-sex marriage. You can't. You can't. How can you do that? And I know people say, well, it's okay. I know, but what are we supposed to do? You can't do that. You can't do that. And so uh, let's pray for our country here in these next few weeks. You say, Brother Danny, what if they put you? Look, so they got me, y'all. Look, the stuff I got on YouTube, ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm, I know where I'm at, brother. They know where I'm at if they want me. And it might happen. I ain't trying to sound big and tough. I don't want it. But uh, there ain't no telling. We're going to see the men separating the boys here probably in the next 20 years. The Lord don't come. So make up your mind you're going to live right. All right? All right, let's go to work a little bit. All hearts clear. Be dismissed. Word of prayer. Fellowship. We got some work to do. DJ, you ready? All right, me and him's going to go sign in for a little bit. Uh, we was going to do it yesterday and didn't get it done. Going to do it this evening and didn't get it done. Uh, we, the, we got some stuff to do. Uh, make sure you invite all your family and friends. Be here every service. Don't be late. Be in here on time, ready to go. God will bless you for it. Let's pray. All right, Mr. Fletcher, dismiss the prayer, would you please?